start your day with the Photoshop Creative Challenges every day this week at 9 a.m. Pacific. Tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. Want to learn more about Adobe Express? Check out the replays on our Adobe Express channel with Catliente and learn more on how to design simple overlays for your Twitch channel. Hello, everybody. I am DTM, a.k.a. Delta Tango Mike, and we are now in day two with the amazingly talented Stephanie DeAngelis, an illustrator and designer from Los Angeles, California, showing us how to take your artwork to the next level. Good morning, Stephanie. How are you? Hey, good morning, Dan. I'm doing well. And thanks, everyone, for joining back in for day two. How are well, you doing we, this morning? I've been well, really great, enjoying myself and learning so much from you. I like hanging out with artists so that I can kind of learn their secrets. And I know it's not a secret because they're not trying to keep a secret from me, but it's like this is your process that, that you've designed for yourself. And I'm always interested in what is those processes like. So I'm having fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love talking with other artists and illustrators and, and like sharing secrets and like learning different workflows too. So yeah. <laughs> nice. So what do you have for us today? Awesome. Yeah. So jumping into Fresco now, um, just a little recap from yesterday. Uh, we or I, <laughs> I, I was working on the different little vignettes uh, with the trees and houses and people that would uh, be on a um, tote bag design. Mm -hmm. So uh, from yesterday, we had the little, we had the template that we were working in. Um, so, and before we signed off yesterday too, I had just refined some of the sketches and afterward, I just cleaned things up a little bit to get ready to jump into color today. Uh, nice. Yeah, so um, today we'll bring in color. And since this is a product that's going to be printed, I will be using vector brushes so mm -hmm. that I can ultimately bring the file into the Illustrator if needed or clean it up in Fresco um, and produce a file that's ready to be sent to a printer. There you go. Uh, this is my favorite part. Vector yeah. brushes. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Okay, so I want to go over to my... Yeah, so today I think I'm going to start with, um, since we're going to move into color, I personally like to start with a color comp of my piece. Mm -hmm. um, so color comp, if anyone's not familiar, it's just a quick pass at color. It, it's not so much detailed, it's rather like you're laying down the color on your piece to plan out before you jump into the final. It's not always needed. I just like to do it because I think it helps you go through all those, what about this color? What about this color up front? Mm -hmm. and, and then when you get into actually drawing the shapes and filling it in, it's a little more of a smooth process. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's why I like to start with a color comp and then you get to play with different color palettes, kind of have that explore phase there and then jump into like a more final phase. So yeah, I'm gonna open my vector brushes. So my favorite is the round brush. Um, I think it's such a smooth line. Um, I'm gonna play around mm -hmm. with the pressure dynamic a little. I'm gonna bring it to like 45. Let's test that out. Yeah, I love mm -hmm. the round brush. I think it's super smooth. Um, has like a marker quality in my opinion. Um, definitely a, a contrast from like the sketchy quality of the lines from the other brush, but yeah, I like it. it gives that smooth shape. It's it's not super um, smooth in the sense that you like lose little, lose some texture. Mm -hmm. I think that's good for me. So yeah, I'm gonna go into my library and start to pull some colors that I was thinking for this. And the composition has a little natural, like the trees, there's some mm -hmm. shadow. Um, buildings too, definitely been like inspired by buildings in LA. So I think I'm going to keep those in like maybe like a cream or a pink tone. So I'm going to bring that in first. Mm -hmm. And looking at your library, color library, when it, when you were selecting the color, yeah. is this um, a, something that you have saved in your library so that you always have access to this exact palette? Yeah. So I, oops, I um, created swatches in my library on photoshop and since it's you know with the creative cloud it, it, you can open it on different apps so yeah i, I created uh swatch libraries just it's helped me be able to work through work in different apps mm -hmm. more 
effectively and like yeah easier than like importing colors or bringing in hex code so yeah it's, it's a really nice, nice it's a really nice tool to use once you start to like identify colors you like to use or like if you're working especially if you're working on a project too that um might have specific colors that you need to use throughout mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yeah, it's, it's better when you have it and, yeah uh, and, and so so that means that you have a very uh strict a color palette that you stick with throughout your images throughout well, your artwork yeah sometimes <laughs> i do i think for the most part yeah i know it's like i i used to have a pretty strong or strict color palette and i'd only mm -hmm. stay with them there but now i've been like branching out and bringing in other colors i like mm -hmm. um right okay. i have really tried to yeah color is definitely one of my favorite parts of illustration and, and design i think you can do so much and i've been really trying to like push color palettes lately try to um use like tints and shades within the colors i choose to really help add dimension to the piece too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and, and that's a and that's the thing that like with me i ask okay because i uh with my colors i'm not that good of a color person so I don't keep track of my colors and maybe that should be the first step. At least keep track of colors that I know I've used before that worked well and, and keep that palette. And, uh, that's a good, uh, something to think about. Yeah. 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 I totally think it's worth it. Like going and looking at colors you like to use and maybe like, I don't know. I, I don't really have like rules, but I like to stay around like maybe five colors, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. you can just like, play with the tints and tones or tints and tones uh and shades and mm -hmm. like saturation of it throughout you know there's a lot of different uh one thing i think is really fun too if and i can probably i'll probably play with this um as we go along a little bit more but you can always use different like blending modes to play with the colors as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right so right. i like these just a little bit bigger these five up here the the green mm. the pink the orange orangey marigold yellow a brown tone and then a neutral tone mm -hmm. um which is this cream which i think i might start with the background color but i'm not 100 percent sure let's just play with this while stephanie is playing around with colors let's give a shout out to everybody joining us in the chat wade a cuff in the house what's up wade Oliver, what's going on? Steve Festus, what's up, my man? Bruce Gonzalez, how you doing? Anika in the house, appreciate you. Oliver, Alejandro, we got folks from all over the world right now. That's cool. Anki, uh, Jack, what's going on, Jack? And uh, let's see who else we got. A, a whole, a, a, a lot of our uh, usual suspects here. Bayola, haven't seen you in a minute. Welcome. And Latin Swami, Remy. And if your our name is in a different language, I'm sorry. How you doing, Paloma? Welcome to the stream. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Remy says, I want to ask a few questions. Please do it in the chat. Leave us a question and we will make sure we answer it. Okay. Nice. Thank you, Wade, for... Uh, giving us a reminder that the chat is in English. And right now, Stephanie's building her color palette. Let's take a look. All right, so when I first start doing color comp, I'll just create a layer beneath my sketch layers um, and then just start filling things in. So we'll start with this composition down here. And again, it's not it doesn't have to be perfect mm -hmm. um or at least that's in this phase i'm not super concerned about you know keeping everything in line it's it's definitely more just to see how things look together mm -hmm. so really like to that's, try to have that's, i do that a lot you. too sorry to interrupt you oh no don't worry uh -huh. what, what, what's up i do that a lot also like sometimes i just start coloring yeah even if it's not the exact color i'm gonna stick with um just because i need to i need to start seeing what to edit but without having 
put any color in, you don't know where the edits are going to happen until you see something. So you have to put something down. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I think too, um, do you ever like to do warm ups before you start? Your yes. Work? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I find too that this phase uh, can kind of, since it's not, it's a little looser, it's a nice warm up. You know, you can just mm -hmm. start throwing color down. You don't really have to. I, I think it helps just get out of your head. Yes. And mm -hmm. onto the paper <laughs> mm -hmm. without being cheesy. Yep, that's it. There you go. So you're using one layer for all the colors. Yeah. Uh, got a vector layer down here, uh, which is really cool too. If you want to look over to my layers panel, um, mm -hmm. you'll notice that a couple, or uh, you know this, but anyone who's new to Fresco might not know, uh, on the different layers, they'll have a marker indicating if it's a raster or mm -hmm. vector layer. So it helps mm -hmm. you manage um, your, your layer and file mm -hmm. well. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, I did notice that some, and I think uh, for the, you can always split up all the different uh, elements in that layer into different layers. Um, so when the warm up comes in, you can just do anything, uh, just drop in the color, focus on one thing at a time. Yeah, just, yeah, and and yeah, then worry about your layers later. Yeah, <laughs> worry about them later. Mm -hmm. This is just a nice warm up. Mm -hmm. getting you used to working on paper or sorry not paper <laughs> on yeah. screen That's right. you know what i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's kind of like paper now <laughs> mm -hmm. almost yeah well yeah of course hello remy uh the question is do you do one-on-one -on -one personal coaching is that something that you do stephanie um i have never done uh personal coaching however i am always open my DMs on Instagram. I have a contact form on my website. Um, I can't promise immediate response uh, depending on my workload, but I'm always open to take questions or or answer anything um, you might have. And if that's something you'd be interested in, mm -hmm. um, maybe in the future, yeah. Okay. Or at least I'm, I'm totally happy to like point you in the right direction if you're starting your creative career and, and share with you some awesome resources I've used in the past and mm -hmm. so forth. Nice. But thank there you. you. I'm, I appreciate you <laughs> even considering that. <laughs> yes. You got, you got amazing skills and uh, there's always extras that you can learn from one-on-one. -on -one. So that's awesome. Remy, that is your answer. And there's the links to Stephanie's uh, website, Instagram, and Behance. And just as I added note, that there are a lot of artists here on Behance who have subscription options and you can subscribe to the artist to get further insights and possible one of one sessions with them. So you got to find the artist that you like, check out their profile and then reach out and subscribe if you want to. So uh, Behance and Adobe are making it very easy to connect with artists and build on your skills. Super awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for showing that. I, I'm, I probably would be interested in that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, but yes, I do have a subscription also. I was just going to oh. ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I love to talk about art and drawing, you know, but like you said, there's sometimes that you're under a deadline, so you got to stay focused and uh, shut the world out so that you can get the work done and that happens every now and then mm -hmm. yeah sometimes <laughs> yeah paloma dora says ice creams are the new paper <laughs> yes mm -hmm. Oops. so so you're drawing some of the buildings in a layer underneath the colors of the tree layer so that way they, you don't have to draw around the tree. You just draw on that layer behind it and uh, get your full size shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just an easier way to go about it. Um, yeah. And then that way too, if you need to change the color of something, there's a little, you know, there's some separation, even though it'll, since it's vector, it'll drop directly into that shape if it's on it. I just like mm -hmm. to pull it behind. So yeah, it's easier to work it through there. Nice. 
Nice. Remy says, your work is amazing. I love it. And I want to be a designer myself. Nice. You well, can do it, Remy. You can. Yeah, you can definitely do it. There's... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't say I'm like directly self-taught illustrator because I, I did learn illustration a lot in college. and um, But I, that wasn't my major. That wasn't like my primary focus. But uh, I'd always loved drawing. So I don't think you need to... Don't like, yeah, don't think that you need to get like a formal education, and especially there's so many awesome resources to learn mm -hmm. creative skills nowadays online. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for your journey. <laughs> nice. Yes. And did you go to school? Uh, you said you, you kind of learn on your own, but did you go to school? Was Did you go to college? Did you get a degree? Yeah, I got a um BA in design so I did go to school for design um okay. and I worked as a graphic designer for several years after college and I still sometimes do a fair amount of design work now uh in my freelance uh world um and I love design I think yeah to definitely go back to my previous statement I think having a design background helped my illustration career for sure. And then going off into a creative field after college and kind of working in that, definitely the proximity to that world helped me get into illustration for mm -hmm. sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you pick up things along the way. You, yeah, definitely. Yep. <laughs> the school of life. <laughs> uh -huh. That's right. That's right. You know, and, and when artists say uh, self-taught, it's not that, um, you learn uh, uh, that you taught yourself is that you learn from things along the way, whether they're books, videos, um, magazines, tutorials, whatever it's you're picking up or even experience is uh, being in close proximity with another artist and yeah. watching them and learning from them. You, we all learn from someone else. So, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I have, yeah, I, I totally agree. Being, watching your favorite artist, you know, listening or listening to what they put out or watching what they put out or mm -hmm. if they do videos, um, watching that, I definitely, for me, I know that I've learned from observation a lot mm -hmm. um, or in instances like this where you get the opportunity to like ask artists questions. Um, I think if you can through social media or in real life or even in your creative day jobs if you have them mm -hmm. network with people um and build those relationships so you can ask questions and mm -hmm. you it definitely helps for sure it's, it's hard to build that network but and it definitely takes time but as you do progress in your career making those connections or connecting yeah having people you know on social media who you can yeah. you know ask questions or just become friends with has mm -hmm. really become helpful been helpful i'm sure you can attest that too dan oh yeah yeah and and like right now this is one of those moments where you get to ask questions have access to a professional someone who is enjoys their work and is willing and open to answering questions and taking you through a couple of steps and there are it, it, it this is why you know a platform like behance and streams like this are super important yeah mm -hmm. totally mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome um, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was just asking about the school thing because uh, I didn't go to school and, uh, and so, you know, but, but, but I'm a big, um, supporter of artists asking questions because that's how I learn. I yeah. asked a ton of questions for, uh, about any artist I can get a hold of who knew about something that I wanted to learn questions, 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 and then, uh, putting to to the test those things that they told me yeah uh, mm -hmm. yeah i love that always yeah always asking questions like always be opening being open to learning too and like mm -hmm. having that desire to to learn um mm -hmm. from all different sources is super important oh, yeah. and will definitely help you that's right there you go so you guys are in the right spot right now <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah, any questions, I'm, I'm totally happy to answer. I mean, between the two of us, we'll, we'll definitely share. That's right. That's right. I like the highlight in the tree. It's got yeah. the little sun. That's cute. 
Yeah, so I'm laying down like the main color fills right now. I added this like darker purple. Um, for the shadow. Yeah, for the shadow. Um, and I also yeah. like that color. Maybe the person's going to wear that. Um, might add some more shadows in this building, actually. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember seeing you draw that yesterday. Maybe I missed it. Yeah, so yesterday I took a pass at the illustration, wanted to refine some things. Mm -hmm. And I was working on this upper right corner piece a little bit and wanted to pull, kind of make it a little wider and added a tree that I liked. And I had a, a gal hanging, like looking out the window in the top right corner. Oh, that's I like right. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And I like the square shape, but I didn't think it was really working. So I liked this building. So I kind of reworked it a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Now, now I remember what happened here. Yeah. And I did notice the flowers. Those are your website flowers. Are they a particular type of flower? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, I have a, there's like a, a lot of, I'm lucky in my neighborhood. There's like a lot of flowers on the curb that kind of grow out and there's these little tiny daisy looking ones i see everywhere i mean they might be a weed i'm not sure uh <laughs> but they are super cute and i have been drawn to that i also like how the flowers kind of feel like rounded and mm -hmm. I, I was considering possibly putting in like clouds as a little in the corner um but i opted for the flowers and then i also thought that i wanted to bring in some yellow or white down here. So like maybe alluding to the fact that those little pieces could be flowers too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like the idea of flowers being the clouds. That yeah. is cool. That's a good idea. Or it could be sunny side up eggs too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love me some sunny side up yeah. eggs. Yes. Mm -hmm. that is awesome i want to live there wherever that is right there i want to live and hang out over there nice yeah mm -hmm. peaceful peaceful vibe for sure yes all right That's so i think right. we'll go into working on the people i'm gonna start with this little dog Gonna go ahead and address some of the uh, people in the chat. Bruce, thank you so much. Bruce says DTN has a great artwork ethic, by the way. Very inspiring. Thank you, Bruce. I do stream a lot and share a lot of my creative process. It's very important to me that artists find their career path if that's what they want, or at least express their creativity with the tools they have available to them because art is a beautiful thing. And not one of us owns these techniques or this knowledge. I think uh, everybody should have access to it freely. So I agree. Thank you. Yeah, that's why I go hard with it. Uh, Steve says, uh, Stein, sorry, says, uh, again, had a problem with the ruler. Well, I'm glad that Wade uh, addressed that in the chat. Do make sure you can you report the bugs in uh, fresco there is a way i forget exactly where those settings are but there is a way to report bugs and uh and let them know and it's important that you report the bugs so that we know also i'm, I'm just saying we i'm not a developer so i don't get those <laughs> reports but it's important that developers know what system you're on because then they can test for those systems there's all kinds of computers out there some are more powerful than others and it's important to know at what point will a nap not produce what is expected. So, yes, please, please share. And uh, Remy, thank you for your questions. Is asking, uh, can someone build connections and get freelance work if she is not or he is not studied designing professionally? And I think that's what we're talking about in some of these conversations right now, that you have to be around other artists. You have to find where the artists are and get into conversations like you're doing right now and this is where it starts because little tidbits of information is shared and it's just and you just need to know just enough for you to go looking for more information and finding other artists so uh, that will provide the next step and the next step and the next step so it really takes a community of artists i yes. totally agree mm -hmm. uh and Wade says, egg and flower clouds. What a magical place, right? Can you believe it? 
<laughs> I love it. <laughs> and bacon just grows on the on the grass and stuff. He just it comes it. out of it comes out of the ground. And you just pick it out. <laughs> uh, and Latin Swami says Stephanie seems to have a lot of secrets. Somebody make her reveal her secret. You're just gonna have to watch the the replay over and over and over again and pick it up little by little. Yes. <laughs> And uh, uh, Monique says that dog is so cute and awesome. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Yeah, this is really great. Um, watching you put us put this together. This is this is one of those lo-fi channels right here. Like you got some cool tunes, relaxing, watching you yeah. draw. Yeah. Yeah. Can we start your morning or? <laughs> wherever you are mm -hmm. afternoon evening That's a right. good wind down you need that moment of zen yeah absolutely artists need time to relax and hang out and chill with other artists so That's right <laughs> it looks good and i like uh, the fact that you're using the same colors throughout all the different uh vignettes and, yeah. uh, and so that kind of pulls them all together while still being separate scenes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it totally, yeah, exactly what you said. It helps kind of create a th through line. They seem like part of the same world. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I think uh, Remy wants uh, to know more of your secrets, asking, how did you create your website? Did you use like an online platform to create your website or did? You have someone code it or you coded it. Yeah, I, I use Squarespace. I, what I did is just chose, or I chose a template that I was really drawn to. Um, I'm not, I don't really have any background with coding or developing anything, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I chose a template I was really drawn to that had nice, a nice structure that I, after I had planned how I wanted to design my website roughly, um, or at least like components I liked, chose a template. And then I think it's a very user-friendly um, system mm -hmm. to, you know, drag and drop your mm -hmm. um, content or, you know, illustrations, design work, whatever. Um, yeah. And then I just built it through there. Nice. There you go. There it is, Remy. Hang out, ask questions. You'll get the answers. Yeah, Squarespace has been used by artists for a long time. And uh, and don't forget that once you set up your Behance portfolio, you can also have an option of using the portfolio at side of Behance. So you set up your Behance account, set up your work on Behance, and then there should be a little tab that allows you to turn your Behance page into a portfolio website. And you can add an about me page, a contact form, and any other details. And uh, and there it is. Boom. For free portfolio from Adobe and um, Behance. Yeah, I definitely mm -hmm. recommend. Yeah. All right. Talking about creating a network and things like that. I highly, highly recommend um, putting your work on Behance. It's a great way to connect with other creatives in your field a great way to get your work out there i mm -hmm. i mean it's, it, when you get to that point I, i've definitely received jobs from behance too um mm -hmm. and have connected with my artistic heroes on there too so mm -hmm. i highly 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 recommend and it's probably a note for myself too to try to periodically update your behance mm -hmm. um yeah it's a great way to show off the projects that you've put a lot of work into um yes and it's a great way to connect with others in the Adobe community and beyond. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's, uh, you know, Behance has been around for a, a good little while. And uh, my early days, as soon as I heard about Behance, I started my account. And then, but I didn't do anything with it. It was for a long time. I wasn't sure what to put up. You know, you have that uh, overthinking Mm -hmm. I forget what the exact words are, but you're overthinking and you don't do anything about it. And so, uh, so I was having a conversation one day with somebody about my art and, uh, and they were a potential client. We were having a conversation about a project and they asked is, um, what's your Behance portfolio page? 
Oh, wow. And that's when I was like, oh, they're talking about something I should have been doing. <laughs> and yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> so, hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, okay, well, now I, I got to get to it. I got home that evening. I said, well, let's go ahead and start putting some things in there. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And you can, uh, there's so many new features too that on Behance, like live streaming subscriptions mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very Definitely robust. Recommend. Oh, yeah. It's very robust nowadays. And so, the, the difference between Dribble and Behance, Remy, is that in Dribble, you get to put up a shot. That's what there's a whole basketball nomenclature going on there. But you get to put up a, 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 a one image per project or post, and that's your shot. In Behance, it's, it's like a portfolio slash blog. I don't even know how to explain it, but for each image that you see, go through Stephanie's Behance or mine, and you'll see that for every image that's there, once you click on it, there's a whole lot of information. Some of us add more information than others. I like to share my process and include screenshots of how I did the artwork and, and explain in words some of my processes so that others can learn from it and try it out for themselves. And so that's where Behance is really robust because you can include videos, images, text, links, and, uh, and um, code into your page. And a lot of artists out there make very beautiful, beautiful posts. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You can learn so much. I love when people put um, sketch any part of their process uh in their projects too it's super exciting to see i love when you can see something from sketch to vinyl it's so cool because you know all the magic that happened between <laughs> yep and and it helps you get past your own insecurities i mean i've been an illustrator a professional illustrator for a long time but i still have those moments where like how am i supposed to make that yeah you know? <laughs> And so then you dig around through other artists' portfolios and like, well, they started with a scribble scrabble too. Yep. A, a mess of sketches and lines. And okay, okay. If you keep working on it, you can get there. But it all always has to start with something that is uh doesn't much make much sense, but the lines need to get on the paper or the screen. It's very yeah. necessary. Yeah, I totally mm -hmm. agree. Everyone starts from somewhere. And it's a good reminder uh, not to don't not to get too much in your head when you're starting mm -hmm. out or when you're going to share things. And I think it can, especially on like Instagram, no hate to Instagram, but it can be very intimidating when you see mm -hmm. only the final product mm -hmm. in a very curated uh, environment that mm -hmm. obviously that person worked hard to get to that point, but you don't see all the background stuff. You don't see all the years they've been an artist or how many hours they put into that. Um, so I can totally understand that when you're starting, when you're starting out, that can be very intimidating to see this beautiful final thing, but everyone starts somewhere. And mm -hmm. I like to humble myself and look at my old work sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can see how far you've come when you go, when you look back. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There you go. So th there's some tips right there. And this goes into the question that Wade asked any tips for building a portfolio. Yeah, that's a great question. So depending on the type of work you do, I my first thing would be find your artistic heroes and go out and look at how they've arranged their work. Mm -hmm. It's a really great way to learn. It's not, I wouldn't, this is not implying copying how they share their work. It's just implying to take a look at how they are thinking about the stuff they want to share. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. See, yeah, and see how other portfolios are designed. You know, do some research, find out, find references that you like um, and, and so forth. And then another thing I would say when you're thinking about building your portfolio too is think about the clients that you want to do or the type of work you want to create. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that will help you inform how you want to craft your portfolio. So like mm -hmm. if you really want to, I'm trying to think like, well, let's say you want to do animated work, for example. I know that you'd have to build a reel and start building that way. But if you really want to work um, and do, I'm just going to say like, you want to do editorial illustrations, for example. 
and you want to do stuff for newspapers and magazines, uh, start looking for the people who are hiring for those jobs and see if they've ever shared anything that they're looking for, you know, share a lot of these editorial boards have um, places where they call for artist submissions or give artist pointers. Mm -hmm. Some news platform or some platforms even do portfolio reviews for students or people starting out. Um, and then once you kind of have an idea of the stuff you're drawn to or how you want to lay your work out, the type of work you want to do, then you can start filling from there. And I would say um, self-directed projects or like uh, side projects or personal work is if you don't have clients yet, it's the best thing to do. Start mm -hmm. doing pieces a couple times a week or depending on your schedule, whenever you have time, you know, do something weekly or, or have a goal that you're going to create X amount of work by a certain amount of time. And then once you have a body of work that you like, or once you start getting a few clients, you can uh, start to curate the things that you really like um, and the things that are similar to the type of work you want to do. Mm -hmm. And you build from there. And I think too, when you're starting out, showing some of your process can also be very beneficial. And, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be very detailed. It can just be as simple as here's the original sketch and the idea and, and maybe like the color comp, for example, like what we have here. Um, so that clients or people who might reach out to jobs can kind of, even though you might not have a huge body of work, they can get a sense of how you work, which can mm. be really beneficial. Mm. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> Ooh, that's long right there. You guys yeah. should <laughs> need to review what was just said. Yeah. So okay. I'll, <laughs> that was good. No, it's long, but it's good. It's thorough. No, that's what I meant. Yeah. By it. Yes. It, I can sum it up. Yeah. If you want to sum it up, or, or <laughs> the three takeaways would be: do some research about how artists present their work. Um, you know, use different, even from like the work they choose to show and maybe their process to even web design layouts or or finding the best platform that you want to share your work on you know maybe if you're just starting out it doesn't make sense to um pay for an additional website subscription mm -hmm. when you already have a creative cups creative cloud subscription and you have behance so maybe mm -hmm. behance is the best way to start out you know mm -hmm. um so yeah just ask yourself those questions initially and think about that yeah so figure out what you want to do figure out the type of work you want to create in the industry you want to work in um, and see if they have any recommendations from there or like see what they like to see. Like if you're very keen on getting an agent, for example, I know agents really like to see process. So mm -hmm. having that. And then the third thing would be create a lot of work and then curate as you go. That's right. Yeah. This is good. This is good. This is good. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make it oh, sound no. like you were talking a long time. It was, it's just all good stuff. It was yeah. long because it was good stuff. And so I encourage everybody to review everything that was said because it's all helpful. And, uh, and yes, that's it. That's how it goes. Yeah. No, no. I, I know it wasn't anything bad. I was thinking <laughs> maybe I just rambled on. I hope I want to make sure I can like get some three good points that people can take there away. You go. Right, right, right. No, that's good. And that's good stuff. And, you know, um, and so, so yeah, I support everything that Stephanie said. This is exactly how you start building your portfolio. And there is a question here that um that uh, uh, it goes with what Stephanie just said. Remy is asking, how can you find your own styles instead of copy, co copying others' work? And it's the same answer: is by trying things out, trying things out as as you continue to draw, even copying other artists' styles. As time goes on, you will find your place you will find your style and the things that you like so there you go paloma says notes taken <laughs> that's right awesome. yes mm -hmm. yeah finding your style is always the is a, a question that i get a lot and i think it really truly comes from just doing a lot of work you know mm -hmm. you definitely mm -hmm. um sorry i'm just trying to find what layer i'm on oh i have the erase tool and that's why it's not working um do a lot of drawing, uh, you know, work through styles, see things mm -hmm. you like, do projects, come back to them and revise them. Uh, I think sometimes it's good to make up briefs for yourself too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, pretend your dream client reached out to you with your dream project. Uh, what would you create, you know, and think through that whole process. 
of how you'd approach it. Do a million sketches up front and see what you're drawn to and then go from there. Um, and don't, yeah, I would, I would say just focus on or, or gravitate towards the things you like and uh, yeah, yes. just do a lot start, of work and things will start right. popping out you like. Mm -hmm. Start with the things you like first. And, and, and it's okay if you like a lot of different things. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's OK to explore as much as you can in the beginning so that you can find the things you don't like and stop doing those after a while. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's a process. It's definitely a process, not something that's one step. It's several steps. And in, uh, if you want to rewatch this later, you can always come back after the stream is over and watch any of these streams on demand where they're available when we're offline and have replays on both youtube and behance so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the creative goodness and um if you're on youtube you can always rewind while it's live that's weird to me but it's super cool that's cool <laughs> yeah 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 and thank you wade for sharing the link to day one we were we started this process yesterday I say we, but I didn't do anything other than stand here and smile while Stephanie did all the work. <laughs> you definitely did a lot. <laughs> You're hosting, which is That's just right. as important. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I do my part. I try. You do. Yeah. <laughs> um, nice. So I think I'm good with this color comp. Um, as we were chatting, I just filled out it out quickly i like the flow of this i think i want to bring in yellow someplace else after looking at this so i'm going to maybe add some more pops of yellow up here mm -hmm. that's the eraser tool get some highlights in there huh yeah definitely some highlights and while while stephanie works on the highlights let me remind you that don't forget to submit your recommendations for creatives to highlight for our next artist spotlight. The artist spotlight will be in the next 50 minutes at 2 p.m. I'm in the East, so it's 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we will review an artist. Or no, we won't review. We will take a look and explore an artist's portfolio. So uh, there will be a link that uh, Wade will share that where you can add in your own submit your own link for a portfolio uh, or submit someone's portfolio link. And big ups to everybody in the chat. We got enlightened Swami. Yes, nice, but you smile very good. I try. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Bruce, thank you. Becca, thank you. Thank you all for uh, the chat. RB in the house and uh, another amazing illustrator. Thank you for stopping through. There it is. Uh, Artist Spotlight tab is above in the chat on the Behance page. Thank you, Wade. Nominate yourself for another creative in the Artist Spotlight tab above the chat. Nice. All right. So I think I'm going to, at this point, I'm happy with what I have color comp wise. I think it's enough for me to get started on the main piece. So I'm going to pull out the little individual pieces and blow them up and fill them in with color. Uh, so we'd start with this house. I'm going to minimize these, create a new layer, paste into there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not so worried about the size of them in relation to each other right now, because again, vector, which is a really great tool. Um, but I'm not going to do any line work on them at this point until I get them in the final layout. So then that way there's consistency across the board on the line work, which is like a little trick or not even a trick, but it's usually how I like to work if I'm applying line work to anything. Um, I try to wait till the later phases so that the final product has a consistent mm -hmm. yeah look across the board unless i'm i'm having a very light weight so you, so you colored them 
one time to look at your uh, color options and now you're going to color them again but this time you're going to get some those straight straight lines you really want yeah this mm -hmm. is like the more final mm -hmm. approach so taking a little more care with the corners and the lines mm -hmm. very cool enlightened swami says creativity is the greatest rebellion in existence quote by osho nice <laughs> i agree i love it i love it uh -huh. <laughs> if you're just joining us illustrator and designer stephanie DeAngelis is showing us how to take your artwork and add it to products she adds different images that will be turned into patterns for a parachute tote bag and of course remember to subscribe and like the video leave a comment question or suggestion so that we know you are there we won't know you're there until you say something and we want to say <laughs> something to you so Please drop a comment. That's a very straight eraser line. That's good. Yeah, actually, I learned first time I was here with Adobe Live, I learned from someone in the uh, comment section. They had given the suggestion for drawing straight lines or gave their suggestion for drawing straight lines. And it said, look at where you're ultimately drawing towards. So look at the end point. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's a really great tip. And I've definitely utilized that a lot mm -hmm. since then. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> and Wade says, that's right. Dan is calling out all the lurkers in the chat. <laughs> that's right. Lurkers say something. Bruce Gonzalez is also a great illustrator. Thank you, RB, for uh, reminding me. Yes, uh, Bruce is insane. Some of his work is just like how... How can that be a drawing? That must be a picture. That's how good he is. Hey, hello, Jenny. How you doing? Welcome to Behance and today's stream on creating illustrations with products with Stephanie DeAngelis. Nice. That's right. I guess I like yes. that process too, where you do the outline and then just fill it in with the paint bucket. It's yeah. my favorite part of the vector brush or yeah. favorite feature of the vector brush. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, I so feel, I'm, just... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, it's okay. I said I was just kind of refining the shapes now from there, which definitely makes it easy to fill really quickly and then build upon the shape. Mm -hmm. and, and I was going to say, so right now your brush doesn't have like pressure sensitivity. Or or you're just so so good with the pressure level of your yeah. pencil. Yeah, so I definitely turn them turn it. It's at forty five percent right now. The pressure mm -hmm. dynamics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I know for myself personally that I push down pretty hard. So I try to turn it down because I can mm -hmm. no, I I can definitely notice quickly uh, the line weight shifting if mm -hmm. I push. So there's a very little bit of pressure on that right now. That's good. Yeah, you you uh, you want to control the pressure uh, at least when you're um, when you want to get that refined edges. You want to refine the edges. The the more control you have, the better. Yeah, sure. definitely. Um, and that's another tool I would recommend is when you're kind of getting started in your creative process. And it always it evolves as you go. But uh, play around with a lot of brushes too. Mm -hmm. See what you're drawn to. Mm -hmm. um, don't feel like you only have to, or don't, I would just say explore before you start saying you don't want to do something. I right, guess right, is a good right. way to round that statement out. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you might like the, the, uh, squiggly look. They even, uh, uh the Fresco has some vector brushes. that are all squiggly. I forget the yeah. name of them, but they're very, uh, wavy. So yeah, it's a tool for everybody. Truly. I think I'm gonna bring my brush size down a little just to help. We were able to draw out Andrew. Andrew says nothing wrong with lurking. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and and I know that's too that sometimes um I will have a B hand session open so I can listen in to the conversation and uh and then look up every once in a while, but I'm not necessarily 
drop uh, putting comments in the chat because I'm 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 working on something else and it's good to have that creative flow going around in my space by listening and watching a Behance stream. So I get it. A passive participant. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, I do that too sometimes. I um, like to put on either a past live or someone's stream in the background so I can still hear what's mm -hmm. going on. And yeah, sometimes glance up and look, but I'm still able to do my work, you know. Mm -hmm. Some people play podcasts or TV shows. And, uh, and it's always good to have a Behance stream. Nice. I will remind y'all to stick around for the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Jack Watson, followed by a new episode on how to with Claudine. Claudine will show you how to create a social media campaign using Illustrator. I have it in my notes to say Claddy, Claddy's last name, but I don't know if I can pronounce that right. So maybe Wade can help me out, or maybe you know how to spell or pronounce Claddy's uh, last name, Stephanie. I don't. I, I'm okay. not sure who they are, but I was going to say I, I really would like to w watch that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, uh, Claddy is a super talented, amazing designer, and. Um, Print My Soul is her brand, and she always has something that you can learn. In every session, she'll have something that, that is uh, valuable for you to learn and try out. And I've done a few of these uh, how-tos, and, uh, and I'm always surprised by the tools that we use in those how-tos where it's not a tool that I normally use. So it just makes that app, especially Illustrator in my case, that much more interesting. So check it yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to add some shadow back here. I threw a clipping mask on. What layer am I working on? Not the right layer. All right. There we go. Mm -hmm. Now it'll work. <laughs> I, uh, I was like, that doesn't yep. seem right. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Add some shadow. And you like the clipping mask because as you're drawing, as you, as what the, the marks that you're leaving, as soon as they go outside of that shape underneath, there is no more mark. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. right, so I can share. So go over to the layer panel. I can just click this and you can see that goes off and you don't need to use clipping mouse but i think it's a great tool um mm -hmm. definitely a great shortcut to get the color or whatever it is on the, the layer above clipped into what you have mm -hmm. so i'd highly re i actually <laughs> highly recommend getting comfortable it's super easy to use and, and very intuitive nice nice uh welcome casey says first time on behance and that uh, you're working on your first comic. Well, congrats, welcome, and we'd love to see you share that process when you get a chance. There's a lot of cool tools in Fresco that I like, um, and uh, I'm always surprised by some of the new updates. So please try out Fresco, download it, there is a link here in the Behance page. If you're watching this on YouTube, come on through to Adobe Live here on Behance.net forward slash live and you will be able to just click through the Fresco icon and make sure that you can try out and test Fresco. Fresco works on PCs, on most PCs, on all the Surface devices, Wacom devices, and on iPad. And I think Stephanie is working on an iPad. What kind of iPad do you have there? Yeah. Stephanie? So it not, it's older. It's an older model. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe I got this iPad in, wow, 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely an older generation, but I, yeah, it works 
really well on the iPad. It is super compatible with the Apple Pencil. Um, that's currently what I'm using right now. Uh, yeah, I would highly recommend. There's great features and uh, yeah, I think you had mentioned yesterday just how robust an app it's truly become with the animation assist and mm -hmm. always cool updates. So, so you don't need the latest and greatest. You don't have to spend all your money uh, on a brand new shiny iPad, even though it's cool. Even though it's uh, cool. <laughs> if you got the money, go for it. Go ahead and buy two or three. One for Stephanie, one for me, and one for yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, but but no, yes, it's a. Uh, I, I have a uh, my first iPad. It was used. I actually traded a Mac Mini. Oh, nice for an iPad. And uh, it already had a crack on it. I went to a, a pawn shop and they had it advertised on Craigslist. And so I gave them a call, said, hey, I want to trade. What do you think about it? They asked me for the um, specs on the Mac Mini and uh, and they agreed to a trade. So I walked in, handed them the Mac Mini, they tested it, wiped it, and then they handed me this iPad. I still have that iPad to this day. Nice. It has a crack on it. I didn't care. I went and bought a screen protector and a pencil and boom i was drawing on the ipad it is uh they're very reliable and they're awesome for the type of illustrations that i like to do and fresco is one of those tools that are perfect for a touch device like that yeah mm -hmm. that's really cool yeah this mm -hmm. you can find used ipads uh refurbished there's a lot of different options out there and mm -hmm. I, yeah, and they last a long time. <laughs> yeah, they, if you take care of them, yes. If you take will. care of it, yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely yeah. if you take care. Yeah, that's right. You know, I still have that iPad. It's got a crack on it. I never thought about selling it because it's got a crack on it. So, you know, some people may not see the value of yeah. the device. And I'm like, man, that's a drawing tablet for me. It's it, crack or not. It's it, the value is in that I get to use it for the art that I create. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm right there with you. Mm -hmm. All right. So Wade says, uh, Clady's last name. I thought it was print my soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Her last name is pronounced Virgin. 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 Yeah. Clady Virgin. So there you go. I hope uh, she doesn't mind the way I'm pronouncing it but uh, definitely super talented. A Paloma says, yeah, I was thinking about getting me a new iPad on Swappa. You know, any, any um, source that you can find for a device is great. Just make sure you have the time to test it. Always sit down with the person. Do not pay for it online. Pay for it in person when you're there and test the device. Make sure you can test the speakers, test the screen, bring a pencil to draw on it, and then make sure you can re, uh, reset the device and create your, uh, log in with your account on that iPad so that then you know for sure that the iPad will work for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great tips safe. for sure. Yeah. Go meet at a coffee shop. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Indoors where there's lots of people hanging out on the counter. Sit there. And uh, let everybody see you. But I've got, I bought lots of use. I've only bought new maybe four to five times Apple products. And, uh, and every, every other time it's been used. I tried to find deals. And it used to be, uh, I, I, I was a tattoo artist. I started my car career, art career as a tattoo artist. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I had lots of fun. And so I always look for that trait. Like there's always somebody who has something that I want and, and I would uh, offer them a tattoo. I have an iMac right here next to me. And I traded this 27 inch 2015 iMac for a four hour tattoo. Wow. Yeah. That's a good trade. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. That's I've had it for like four years now. And, uh, and it's been working great since. But, uh, but yeah, I find people on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. I've never used Swappa, and I know there's a few other uh, um, platforms. And uh, I'll find what I like, and, uh, and I'll offer them a tattoo. I haven't done tattoos. I kind of semi-retired yeah, because really of the... Yeah, cool. There's, yeah, I... Uh -huh. 
uh, you have it done in a while yeah because of the change of of the society and yeah. uh you know so i was like you know what let me take a break and i plus i you know i do have plenty of illustration work but uh but when i was doing tattoos i would offer them a, a tattoo in exchange for their device and 90 percent of the people would tell me to leave them alone in not so kind words and then but one out of ten person would say hey i was thinking about getting a tattoo let's do it and boom new device new to me <laughs> i love it yeah new to yeah. you yeah that's awesome trading your one skill for the other product mm -hmm. i would probably have to probably take that there you that's go awesome <laughs> that's right and and it's just about you know it's like it's called bartering yeah and one person has what the other person wants and the yeah. other person has something that the first person wants and that's it let's go ahead and make the trade mm -hmm. yeah such a good way to go about finding gear that you want yes, and right. uh i and yeah you can find stuff all over like facebook i know i'm in i don't often use facebook but i'm in like some groups like free trade or trade groups or like um buy nothing groups which mm -hmm, i know got mm -hmm. really popular recently mm -hmm. but uh people a lot of times just want to give away brand new things that, yeah. or like <laughs> gently use stuff yeah right. i see yep. a lot of ipads and mm -hmm. um i think it's really nice that you can find these communities like in your neighborhood if it's available mm -hmm. to you where people are giving that away or alternatively people ask for stuff that you might have where you could trade or give mm -hmm. to so Definitely yeah. a lot of a lot of cool resources or, or or more resources nowadays to find stuff that's portable or you know getting a gear that you need that you might not have access to. That's right. Use the internet access yeah. to find those things because it's there. Yes, they are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Jenny says I'd probably take that trade too. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I would definitely take that trade. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, um, yes, uh, I, I, I found myself, um, you know, constantly messaging people, and then, uh, and then finally finding one person that would take the the deal. I'm like, yes, I got what I wanted, and my wife is happy with that because that's money we're not spending. You know, she yeah, <laughs> I can keep imagine that cash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> keep that cash make a trade yes and uh i don't know if anybody is from the uk or is familiar with this what i'm about to describe because i'm not even i don't remember the name but i was recently in london mm -hmm. which was really fun but i saw in the tube stations they had ads for a used tech marketplace and mm -hmm. it a really cool design it really definitely caught my eye um but it was a refurbished tech online platform where you could just buy used iPads or iPhones that had good, good like certification. But uh, I was really drawn to the campaign. Uh, I had really cool typography, really cool imagery, fun copy. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure what it's called. I wish I did know, and maybe I'll find it and share on ig after but uh, -huh. uh yeah there's a lot of cool th like resources now to buy that and it's also sustainable yes <laughs> or, or like you know use what's it's still good you can still mm -hmm. use it mm -hmm. yes it's still it's used but it's still good so yeah yeah you don't you don't throw away the device you don't and and someone else gets a chance to put it to work so yes that's super awesome totally mm-hmm yeah, I got yeah, lots of I, Go ahead. Yeah, no, I um first digital drawing pad I had an old Wacom. <laughs> uh mm -hmm. it I, an old coworker just give gave it to me. So I was like, wow, thank you so much. And it was really old, but uh definitely helped me learn and then I paid it on forward to someone I knew who was getting mm -hmm. into that too. So I hope it's still existing, but, uh, <laughs> I hope it's still working, putting in yeah. work. Yes. As long as they, they turn on and they do what you want it to do, then yes, 
put it to work. Oliver is asking, was it CEX Computer Exchange? Uh, I think uh, it's asking if that's the name of what you had seen, but that doesn't seem to be limited. That na that word or that brand is not limited to any particular place. So that's hard mm, to tell. I don't think that was it. Okay. I'm, I'm going to try really hard to try to remember the name. Mm -hmm. Go follow Stephanie on her Instagram where she will share when she remembers. Where yes. She, when, there you go. So stay tuned for more. <laughs> years ago, a friend of mine had a Wacom. It's already 20 years old uh, device. It's a big 21 inch Cintiq. Wow. And, uh, and he wanted uh, me, he was open to training it for me, to me. So I gave him a couple of tablets. I had like some Samsungs at that time that I had collected from tattooing. And, uh, and so I said, here, I'll trade you two, three devices. I forget how many for that Cintiq. And he said, deal. And he was used to reselling a lot of things. So, so he was, it was a good deal for him because he could definitely find buyers for tablets versus a big Cintiq. Which an artist will buy a Cintiq, but the price is sometimes is a little bit way out there. Yeah. And so, um, so I bought it. So, so we traded it. I kept it. Nice. And then a few years ago, a couple of years ago, it was, uh, my wife's birthday. We were going to travel out of town and a week or two before I found somebody who would trade me an iPad pro for a Cintiq. The same kind of Cintiq that I already had, but the newer version. The, nice. And the newer version was still already 10 years old. And, uh, and but this 21 inch is huge. They're huge and massive. And so, so I got him to agree to a trade. So while we're on our way to the vacation spot, I had to do a detour. And it's like a four hour drive to the vacation place. So halfway there, I had to do a detour, get off the highway, meet somebody at the McDonald's. So that we could, we could do this trade and test out this antique. <laughs> so were you in like the parking lot with your laptop? We were and we went in into the McDonald's that we couldn't find any power uh, on the wall. So next door was a motel and we walked into the front desk of the motel and asked if we could just sit at the by the chair and use their uh, power for five minutes. And they agreed. So here we are walking from one parking lot to another with a big box and a Cintiq in it and, <laughs> uh, and boom. But he was happy with the iPad and I brought home the Cintiq. So then a friend of mine, the past, the past couple of years, for the past few years, she's been working really hard in uh, children's books and cool. she's been getting a lot of contracts. And so I had those two Cintiqs and I wasn't using one of them. And I told her, I said, you're going to, I'm going to give you this, the, the older Cintiq because you're at the point now where you need that reliable device that you can draw on and it'll move your work faster. Yeah. And so went to her house, set it up and uh, she's been loving it ever since. You're and a good so, friend. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I, but like you said, I, you want to see the device being used by someone who recognizes the value totally. and puts it to work. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when tech evolves really fast and there's always new stuff coming out. And I think if you're in the position where you can trade or give it to someone who's younger, who's learning, it's it's a great way to like help them on their creative journey. And mm -hmm. of course, that's like if you're able to do it, but yeah, I, I, that's awesome. Yes. Actually, that reminds me of a Cintiq that I don't really use very often. So, uh, <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for when we go yeah. visit LA. Yeah, we have a couple devices to draw on. But yeah, it's it's awesome to have um, a, a variety of devices to work with depending on the project. You know, I love the iPad, but it's sometimes. It feels like I need I need that extra room for drawing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely. Andrew says, "Got me, I uh, got me about to dig up my Intuos Four Touch. I forgot I even have that thing. <laughs> oh, those things are awesome. Still, yes, yes. I don't use them for drawing, but I use them for when I'm an Illustrator. Yeah, using that pen 
in your hand to use the pen tool and illustrator is amazing it much faster than a mouse but you have to practice you need lots of practice yeah definitely uh i when i i used to have an old tablet and the it would be one of those ones where you would be drawing off to the side and looking at your screen versus mm -hmm. like drawing directly onto the screen. Mm -hmm. And I think now to myself, like how I can't believe I was able to work like that. Cause I feel so, uh, like being able to draw directly onto the screen with the iPad is such a, for me, a game changer. Mm -hmm. So I'm just adding some shadow into this tree here. And it looks awesome. Thank you. Really like the bench. I think I'm going to add some shadowing in this tree but i'm not sure i'm gonna lay down the shadows first so i'm just gonna start playing around with that it's a nice shadow when you're sitting there reading your favorite book at the park watching people yeah mm -hmm. feeling that that uh nice cool breeze yeah thankfully it seems cooler out today mm -hmm. where i am in la so mm -hmm. hopefully it's not that hot <laughs> for a few days and it's early for you so you got plenty of daytime to go hang out yeah mm-hmm mm -hmm. Don't forget, everybody, in uh, 20 minutes, we will have our artist spotlight. You have an option to vote on the artist spotlight. Click on the tab that says artist spotlight above the chat, and you can nominate your fellow creators for the artist spotlight. If you'd like to nominate yourself or another creator from Adobe Live community for the Adobe, Adobe Live artist spotlight, just fill out the form. There is a link for the word form. In the word form, there's a link. Just click on it. And they'll be considered for our next segment. Make sure you follow Stephanie and Instagram or here on Behance. Let her know how amazing her work is. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's super awesome watching you put this together. And after the stream, make sure you stick around for the Illustrator Creator Challenges with Jack Watson. Followed by a new episode of How To with Gladi Virgin, where Gladi will show you how to create a social media campaign using Adobe Illustrator. That's been my go-to app uh, since 2000, the year 2000. Big, Do you draw thing. a lot in Illustrator? Uh, all of my work ends in Illustrator. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, yes. I uh, The day dad a friend of mine showed me how how you can make a line in illustrator and if you don't like that way that line is you can pick it up and move it that's the day my mind was blown away and i was like i'm i'm in it i'll do it i, I i'll do it i gotta understand this pen tool and uh and draw because you know you get so used to traditional media pencil illustration or whatever pencil drawing and uh and if you can don't get that line right you draw it again and again and again till you get that line or that this, that um that curve whatever but and with uh, illustrator you know uh you can draw using the pencil tool or the blob brush but if you use the pen tool and the anchor points and paths it doesn't matter where you drop that first line if it's not right you can adjust it again and again and again and then like some things that you mentioned today is that when it's in vector, the artwork can be blown up to whatever size you want it to be. The art is still sharp and clean and crisp. And I was like, oh yes, I'm mm -hmm. hooked. I'm hooked. Yeah, that's my favorite feature. I um I, I was just thinking when you were saying that, I was thinking about how anytime now if I'm drawing. I sometimes feel my hands, if I like make a mistake, I feel my hands go like uh, hit control Z to like undo it. I'm like, nope, this is 
a pencil and paper you're gonna have to turn it around and erase it or That's like right. uh, I, I see myself I, I definitely do this a lot I'll try to pinch in to the paper as if mm. you were to like pinch in on your screen mm. um and it's just funny how yep. your brain rewires itself to learn different things yeah you you're, you're sitting there doing traditional art and you're like I need to get closer to this yeah let's try to pinch and zoom now that's it that's real life yeah <laughs> <laughs> gotta gotta figure it out mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. i think i'm gonna yeah so i've got a couple of these hide this down i have two sh forms kind of mm -hmm. coming together um i'm gonna add more detail once i lay down out the pattern but these are just the general first pass so now I think I'm going to work on the egg cloud flowers. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Those are awesome. What's up, Ashley? How you doing? Thank you, Tony, for coming through the chat. Ashley says the illustrations are looking great. That's right. And then Andrew says you got to use your built-in neck zoom. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Move your eyeballs closer to the paper. That's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Neck zoom. All right. So I isolated those out. I'm going to hide everything. And actually, I can delete this. Don't delete it. Send it to me. I want it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Airdrop it. There you go. That's what that's what people who admire artists will do. Like, don't throw that away. And yeah. You as an artist, you're like, no, this one's not good. I'll keep it. I'll keep it. <laughs> I know. That's, I I can definitely relate to that. Mm -hmm. They'll pull your drawings out of the trash. I'm like, I threw a little away because it's not good. Hello from Brazil. Sorry. Pedro oh, no problem. Carvalho from Brazil. Look at you. That's cool. Let us know where you're watching this from. Uh, Pedro says Brazil. Very cool. And uh, Ashley says, yeah, Ashley and Jenny, they're like, yeah, sometimes I want to touch my computer monitor, forgetting it's not an iPad. <laughs> and then Ashley says, I totally tried to pinch some paper the other day. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, goes. where is everybody uh, joining in from? Yeah, let us know where you're joining from. I, myself, I am in Atlanta, Georgia. I am born and raised in East LA, but I have been out here for a long time. And uh, I know Stephanie is in Los Angeles. Let us know where you're from. Where are you now? While well, we make some eggs in the sky. <laughs> Growing up, I did not like eating eggs. As a kid, I just, I was uh, something about eggs. I couldn't get it. Yeah, I am with you on that. It's one of those foods. I like everything and eat everything. It's one of those foods that sometimes, it's not always into it. Yeah. Well, now I'm addicted. Now that I'm an adult, I'm addicted. Oh, so nice. Yeah, did you make you breakfast this morning? I did not. Not this morning. But that is one of my go-to breakfast foods, uh, eggs. Yes. Nice. I love eggs. You can make eggs in any kind of which way you want. I don't care. I'll eat them. They're good. <laughs> we got folks joining us from Korea. How you doing? Uh, Yun Suk, thank you for joining us from Korea. Jenny says California. Oliver, North Ham Northamptonshire, UK. Cool, cool, cool. Catherine says Wilmington, North Carolina. I've been in North Carolina near Wilmington. Uh, Clever Devlin says lurking near San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Bruce, I think you're in Texas. Cool. Nice, nice. Uh, Becca says I used to have eggs every day, but then I went vegan. All right. So now you only have it every other day. No, I'm just <laughs> uh, Lori says lurking from Chico, California. And Riley says, hello from the Sonoran Desert. What? I wow. hate eggs too, but these eggy 
flowery clouds are everything to me right now. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, Bruce says New York. Okay. I don't know why I thought it was Texas. Sorry, Bruce. My memory. Good afternoon from rainy Florida. It's raining in Florida, Rob. Oh, man. Watching the stream from Oregon. Katie. Oh, Oregon, huh? I lived in Salem for two years when I was uh, in high school. We moved to Oregon from L.A. My mother wanted us wanted to get us out of the city. And uh, the funny thing about Oregon is that if you blink, you miss summer. Oh, wow. <laughs> I heard it rains a lot. Yes. Uh, and that's why it's full of trees and the air smells like wet dirt. <laughs> It's not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's how it is. Yes. Very fresh. They're very fresh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Lots of mountains and it gets cold. The winters are cold. Yes. Ottawa says Terry. Cool, cool. Becca says Texas, New York. They are close. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I confused it. Uh, Misha. Mishka says also from Oregon. Nice, nice. Yes, uh, Oregon is a cool spot. I really like it. Pedro says, hello, everyone. Congratulations on the work. Stephanie DeAngelis. Yes, super talented. We're all right, watching we got the those. process. Go oh, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining yeah. in. Uh, all right, we got the egg clouds. Uh, probably my favorite one so far. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to hide those and just keep going on to the next. I think I'm going to go for this larger scene up in the top right corner. We got uh, 10 minutes before the artist spotlight. Uh, thank you, Oliver. It's raining here in the UK. We had summer last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was last week. <laughs> Uh, Riley says, born and raised in Seattle. Love that wet dirt smell. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Montreal, Canada for Frank. Awesome, Frank. Jenny says, your laugh is contagious. Thank you. Thank you for making me smile this morning. You are welcome. Stephanie loving the illustration. So captivating watching other artists work. Yes. It's Thank awesome. you all for joining. Yes. It's been super coming fun. Together. It's coming together. Let's see yeah. what we got. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go back to my color comp really quick to see what I started with. Got brown, green, alrighty. Actually, I'm gonna eye drop it. Mm. One of my favorite tools, eyedropper, yes. of course. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna bring the opacity down a little bit more. Yeah, I like the technique of drawing under the line layer. So that way you can still see your lines as you're coloring in areas. Yeah, mm -hmm. I found I found that that's very helpful for me. I, I it's very I love watching people's process as well, and I, I love when people uh, you like fill color and then erase away to the shape. I've noticed that a lot with other illustrators. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's super cool. But yeah, I, I like to follow my original line work and usually create an outline of the shape and fill it. Obviously, the bucket tool is super easy and it's a really fast way to fill your color. And then depending if I want to add texture or, or what uh, brushes I'm using, sometimes I'll just color in the fill mm -hmm. um, by hand. Yeah, if the space is small, a quick little fill, hand uh, filling in by hand is easy. But when it's when it's a big shape, let's use the bucket tool. Get it in there. Yeah, and you can see the outline after you fill it in because the lay the outline layer or the sketch layer is above the vector layer, so you don't lose your place of what you're looking at. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Mm -hmm. And that's why, yeah, that's why I really like to try to go into like a more final point of my project with pretty clean lines, you know, it just helps. So then you, you don't have to worry about the shape. You've already kind of decided what you like. And of course, things change as you go and you evolve it. But then it's a, 
it's a way easier workflow i think mm -hmm. yes and and that's and that's what you want as time goes on you develop your workflows and uh, and you have your techniques because one of the things that i i, I like about having a, a workflow for my art is that no matter at what stage i'm in in the drawing i can step away come back a week later and i pick up right where i left off yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it Kinda is like, yeah, oh ahead. yeah go ahead sorry i said it's, it's just like yesterday you we, yeah. we stopped and then we came back and picked up right where you left off exactly mm -hmm. and then it helps too i found that uh i got to the point where i really especially being freelance i really wanted to try to work on my process you know how i go about creating things mm -hmm. and i found that kind of setting up a structure about how you go about creating your work really helps too if you feel stuck mm -hmm. i think uh we can't hear you now stephanie give it a second i know i'm here boom 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 we are getting ready for the artist spotlight so we'll be there in a second and i think i see you now and uh let me go ahead and see if we can get uh there it is looking all good right. all Hello right there we're back sorry about that <laughs> it's all good it's uh it's the internet we're gonna blame it on the internet and the weather wherever the weather is at <laughs> that's funny yeah it's the weather <laughs> mm. There we go. All righty. All right, one second. I'll be right back also. Bam. There we go. Back to our scheduled program. Everybody, we're hanging out with Stephanie, amazing illustrator and designer, showing us how to take your artwork and add it to products. And so far, we got amazing vignettes in a world that I, I wish I could just go hang out. At least vacation. Yeah. If we could have a vacation spot. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, so I'm working on these power lines right now. Hello from Las Vegas, says Yelly. How you doing? Janet, Northwest Connecticut. Cool, cool. Let us keep letting us know where you're where you're at. That's uh, an easy way to get you to engage in the chat. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let us know. Mm -hmm. Say hello. Mm -hmm. Say hello, because uh, in the next uh, few minutes, we will hop off the iPad and jump into the artist spotlight. And uh, Stephanie gonna give us a view of uh, this amazing artist. And I like the fact that you added the second um, power pole. What do you call it? Uh, uh, the second pole, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That'd be cool to connect the shape out a little bit more. I really like the, I love, I mean, living in LA, the, the power lines are a key part of the skyline. So mm -hmm. you see them everywhere. And I love the interaction between trees and that. Um, and kind of the visual uh, scene it is. It's very calming to me. Uh, and it is very familiar. So I wanted to add another one in there. Mm -hmm. Yes. It expands on the on the idea of the vignette too, because it adds a little extra details. Yeah. Yeah. You you feel more focused. Very cool. Uh, Joshua says I used to live in LA. Also, that's cool, cool, cool. Um, uh, Joshua's in San Mateo. Uh, all right. And uh, Casey says, uh, not yet got into Illustrator iPad version. You should. You should. And El Adobe Illustrator on the iPad also has a couple of brushes that are very similar 
to the vector brushes in fresco so i encourage you to try it out and uh, stephanie's uh, what is it you using to draw the power line poles yeah so i'm using the vector brush I'm using the round brush right now the size is 6.5 i think i'm going to kind of i'm gonna go back to my color comp but first i'm going to collapse these layers into a group so it's easier to toggle between mm -hmm. turn that off really quick turn these back on all righty i'm gonna eye drop this bush down here to pull the color and just check back what i had or check back on the colors i had chose for this mm -hmm. piece nice all righty so yeah, I'm going to add the foreground. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So we're going to take a, a break from this illustration and uh, go ahead and uh, pull up the artist spotlight so we can check out this amazing artist. If you're interested in participating in the artist spotlight or would like to uh, nominate yourself for another creative check out that form and the artist spotlight above the chat boom here we go all right so yeah uh so the artist i want to spotlight is an illustrator designer and a friend of mine monique zarbaf she is based in miami she does a lot of awesome work um, for different uh agencies that are you know sharing educational and informational work or um, content around climate activism. She does a lot of really awesome design work. Um, so if you're a budding designer, I highly recommend going and checking out some of her stuff. She is also an illustrator. I love her use of texture. It definitely um, draws from nature and mm -hmm. where she lives in Miami. Super cool. I love her use of bold color. Yeah, I highly recommend going and checking out her work. Yeah, that that uh caterpillar look cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like an uh, illustrator. Yeah, I think she does a lot of stuff in fresco too, so highly recommend mm -hmm. checking out her work. Nice, look at it. So the link is uh we're going to add it to the boom, let me grab it and add it. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Wade. Monique how do you say the last name? Zarbath. Zarbath from Miami. That all that art is amazing, and uh, and just the for, just the illustrations. I'm like the, that's my thing, illustrator. Yeah. They're so clean. Yeah, that is awesome composition right there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Look at that. That's beautiful. Nice. Um, looking down at the rest of her drawings, you can see an example of that hand with the flower if you go down halfway yeah. a little bit yeah that's one and uh and so uh that's the butterfly there's another one with the flower and there's a sketch on a line drawing uh um line paper a little bit further down there it is yeah there, there you is. go and, yeah and it's like there's the inspiration of that first sketch and then boom illustrator yeah. And uh, yeah, I love doodles like that because sometimes the ideas just come to you. You got to get it out. Eventually, you'll have time to get into Illustrator or Fresco or something else. But in the meantime, you, you don't want to leave that idea in your head because you'll forget it later. So yeah. go ahead and <laughs> sketch it out. Nice. Very cool work. And how did you know this artist? You worked together? before yeah we uh used to work together and became good friends and she uh we no longer work together but we've stayed close and i love following her creative journey mm. um like me she's also a designer um and illustrator so it's really cool to meet other people um who are doing that and we've definitely become uh creative uh collaborators you know mm -hmm. we talk about our work a lot we share each other share stuff with each other um yeah okay very cool awesome work thank you monique for submitting your portfolio so we can check it out 
It looks awesome. Everybody go follow the link that Wade has added. There's a question. Maybe we'll get to it after the spotlight. Okay, good. Yes, we will. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you so much for that, Stephanie. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Definitely go check out her work. Tell them that Stephanie sent you. Yes. <laughs> yes. During the Behance Live. Hopefully they, they saw this and they feel good about it. That's cool. Yeah. So we got 20 minutes left, Stephanie. I don't know. I know. I'm trying to, <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, I got to keep pushing this through. Get... Mm -hmm. All and, right. And, double time. And me now. asking questions doesn't help. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's totally okay. I've, I've enjoyed all the questions. Time to multitask a little bit. Sorry. Mm -hmm. We have a question. Uh, well, Yale says, Yale says your work is awesome. Oh, to Monique. Very cool. <laughs> and Chad had a question. Any tips or advice for someone like me? Never figured out how to imagine something and draw it. It frustrated so much that I gave up drawing. No. No. Yeah, oh, I agree. No. <laughs> no. Well, for one, you know, your frustration is valid. I definitely understand. Uh, it can be a very frustrating process. You know, you you want to create something and getting from point A to point B, point A being like, you know, the idea you had in your head, point B to being out on the paper um, can be very overwhelming. But for one, definitely know that that frustration is like, valid for mm -hmm. sure but don't let that deter you from actually creating something you want to create uh it takes a long 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 time to mm -hmm. get to a point where you uh have more confidence when you're you're starting out on your work um there's a beginning stage uh so i would say if you're feeling frustrated maybe try i, I would always say try learning something new, maybe like take a class online, start following people to gain that inspiration to kind of see their tips and tricks. Um, and practice makes perfect. I used to, or a practice I've started to utilize um, in my work, even when I don't have projects, is drawing a little bit almost every day. Uh, you know, that timeless saying practice makes perfect is truly, when it comes to your creative process or developing as an artist as truly like the magic is just practice 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 mm -hmm. and putting in the work with that and uh i promise it it's magical how it happens but once you put that work in you start to see it come through like uh i feel like you feel more content and you will um hopefully be happier with the work you're creating but it does mm -hmm. take time and it can definitely be frustrating and i know that or i don't know but i've definitely read a lot and I've heard different accounts from people how um, a lot of artists when they're first starting out usually give up because of the frustration with getting started um, and know that you're not alone in that all artists go through it I think I mentioned earlier too that uh, you know a lot of times we're only seeing the final awesome piece that someone's done not all of the option not all of the um, rounds they went through trying to get there uh, you know, not all of the, the sketches that they went through, you know, how much time they put into it. So, yeah, don't be discouraged. I know it can be, but uh, keep working through it. And eventually you'll get to a point where you're um, you're vibing with your work. There you go. Nice. Yes. Don't give up. But uh, it, it, it just explore, explore, explore. Take your time. Take your time. Yale says Stephanie's work is awesome also. I love the woman she created. Also enjoy her color palette. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you all being here. Mm -hmm. Go check out Stephanie's Instagram and, and just start picking the palettes off of her work right there. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting near the end. We have another um, 15 minutes. Boom. And uh, so you guys go ahead and ask the questions you want. Get in uh, uh, on this uh, chat here. We have a 
chat wide open. Appreciate all of you guys uh, hanging out with us. And please leave a like. There is a thumbs up. I forget what it's called here. Appreciation. On Behance, it's called an appreciation. And stick around for the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Jack Watson, followed by a new episode of How To with Claddy, where she will show you how to create a social media campaign using Adobe Illustrator. I think I am going to stick around for that myself. Adobe Live replays are available when you're offline. And we have replays on both YouTube and Behance. So please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on these creative goodness. Oh, well, we let Stephanie focus. <laughs> it looks good. I like it. I think it's a very cool art style. And Chad says, thank you for the advice. Of course. Yeah, I uh, definitely struggle with imposter syndrome a lot. Um, you know, I think there's a huge personal element. I think if you're a creative person, uh, you know, you are, there's a level of vulnerability um, that, you know, you have with your work. And uh, it can definitely be overwhelming at times. Mm -hmm. And just know that, yeah, we all experience imposter syndrome in some respect at some point in our career um but i don't let it discourage you that's right yep you gotta um keep practicing practice practice and you know and i think somebody mentioned this and i forget exactly the person who mentioned it is uh copying other people's work other art other other artists work you know just use their their um example of their work to for you to try out something and just see what it's like, you know, little by little, you'll start finding your own way. You'll start finding the things that you like to draw, the techniques that you like drawing in. But it's but it has to it takes a lot of practice. It's going to take time, you know, and it's in how fast or how soon you get good at it. It's going to depend on the time that you put into it. So try not to stress out yourself because art's supposed to be fun. So don't stress out, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you find yourself getting stressed you know just take a little break and come back to it mm -hmm. yes, all right don't force it so i'm gonna lay out some of the pieces that are more final mm -hmm. just so we can start to get a view of it as we are Look getting close that. to the end of the stream definitely want to see it come to life more mm -hmm. i'm definitely into these all right, I think we're going to try to do this bottom. Actually, I'm going to try to do this character with the dog really quick. So I'm going to turn these off. So much. So many uh, groups. There we go. Come on. Yeah. I was like, oh, I Come on, find groups. It. Uh -huh. <laughs> All righty. So now I'm going to create a new layer really quick. Paste that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes I find that when you blow up the, the drawing you're going to work on is helpful because of the line weights you yeah the line weight can only get so thin mm -hmm. there's a limit so you want to be able to expand on it all right bring the opacity down just a little bit more because the dog is white and so i want to make sure i can see everything mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right. chad chad is saying uh, i want you to think about references we talked about references yesterday so if you can draw anything you see, just not anything you can't see, well, then that means you have to find that thing you want to draw and see it so then you can draw it. And we call those references. So look up lots of references for anything you have in your mind. And then you'll find that reference so it's in front of your eyes. And now you can see it and try drawing it. Yeah, references are great. I take a lot of photos of things I see. I, when I have a dog and I take him out on walks a couple times a day. And I, I 
call it my like inspiration time because I always see stuff I love whether it's you know a cool person you know on a jog and the way they're running is really like you you see a lot of movement or they have a really bright outfit or you know uh the cool trees in my neighborhood or the way the sun set uh the light is like reflecting on the house so yeah I think you can find cool references and um I wouldn't worry even so much about it. it doesn't even have to be like literal it can you can definitely find a lot of like figurative um and abstract references for things too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's books and yeah. magazines and internet um and yes yeah, stepping outside <laughs> yeah i mean i uh -huh. like to try to get a yeah i feel like i spend a lot of time behind the screen which i can't can't complain about really but when i have the opportunity to i try to get outside um take a break get some fresh air mm -hmm. that's right that's awesome um uh if you can move your mouse uh stephanie that'd be oh, great yeah. i'm sorry about mm -hmm. that you're good you're good uh excellent resource says uh wait because Lori as uh, added into the chat, my favorite book is called Imaginative Realism by James Gurney. How to paint what doesn't exist. So there you go, chat. Chat has just asked. So what about for something more fictional? Thank you for the awesome ideas. And there you go. Very cool. Well, I'll have yeah. to check that book out too. Mm -hmm. I just I, I just copied and pasted on a new window so I can take my time for it later. Nice. Uh huh. Wade says there's a lot of artists that will roughly sculpt their reference if it doesn't exist. Wow, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and uh, Chad says, uh, "What is this outside you speak of?" <laughs> <laughs> Go outside, or you know, sometimes read your favorite comic books, watch your favorite shows. You need to find a time for that ins to feed that inspiration. The, you feed the inspiration by the things that you're exposed to. And then when it's your time, your turn to draw, everything you fed your inspiration will come out in, in a way that inspires what you're going to create next. Absolutely. So, so you must feed it. Yeah. Reading a book, listening to music, playing a video game that you like, uh, I really love Animal Crossing. I feel like you could probably <laughs> gather some of that from my work. Uh, so yeah, all of those things are great ways to like be nice to your mind and mm -hmm. help get those creative juices flowing. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, Becca says that I think the more you draw from reference, the more you get ideas, inspirations for how to make your own fictional ideas. That is correct. That is correct. So you start with the references and little by little, you start adjusting those references to fit what you want to see. Mm -hmm. Kind of like this doggy. Mm -hmm. You want to see a brown ear? Let's draw a brown ear. And I bet you that's a brown leg coming up. Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> This is my way to create some shadow and some character mm -hmm. with the pup and add a spot on his back. Yeah, that kind of looked like a saddle. So do not yeah. try to ride that doggy. <laughs> Maybe um, we'll add some more spots so it doesn't look go. so much like a saddle. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fun doggy, not a riding dog. Loosely, loosely inspired by my dog. <laughs> Mm, all right. Yeah, I uh, I used to have a cat. Love my cat. And, uh, and sure enough, anytime I draw a cat, it's always inspired by my cat. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, even if it's it's not my dog, it is. Mm hmm. Boom. Alrighty. I think that's good for the little pup. Uh, go to the character now. Or collapse that down. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Uh, Wade is asking, what's your dog's name, Stephanie? My dog's name is Remy, actually. 
<laughs> cool. <laughs> Remy. And you only have one dog, one pet? Yeah, I only have one dog. I uh, would love to have more, but mm -hmm. not necessarily realistic right now. But okay. yeah, I love having a pet. Definitely, I, I call him my intern sometimes. Because, uh, you know, if you are working remote from home alone, uh, <laughs> you know, you miss the office vibe. So I'm very thankful I have a... <laughs> intern <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nice you have someone to blame for uh the the project results like yeah. wait a minute it was the intern did that. yeah i'm so sorry <laughs> my intern didn't send me the files in time uh that's super cool Yeah, we're getting near the end. We have five more minutes. What are you going to be able to show us in five minutes? And I kind of want to remind everybody to go ahead and follow Stephanie's Behance and Instagram so that we can catch up to how this illustration ends. What does the final result look like? If at one time, if one day, uh, Stephanie decides to print this in real life, we get to see it by checking out her Instagram or Behance. Yeah, absolutely. I know we're definitely running low on time, so I'm going to try to figure this, finish this uh, character up over here. But I definitely plan on finishing this pattern and um, creating some reusable shopping totes, parachute bags with them. Mm -hmm. So definitely follow along. Um, so you can see the final, hopefully I'll try to wrap it up this week. Uh, and I will share it all there for you, you to see. Yes. Go ahead and click through the links that Wade has shared. There is a link to Stephanie's website. And on the website, there's a shop navigation button that takes you through to the store and uh shop prints fulfilled by society six i like society six and uh, there's three prints there so go ahead and check it out and you probably update us when you have that tote bag for those yes. of you who aren't into tote bags oh look at that there's pillows in society six i like that yeah i think society six um there's a lot of uh awesome platforms out there if you want to sell your work. I think Society6 is a great site. Mm -hmm. I've been on there for a bit now and uh, definitely recommend. Yep. Yes. Anytime I draw something and people like it and they ask me for a shirt or a print of it, I will upload the file to Society6, make the item and then share the link so that Society6 takes care of everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Very cool. Please follow the links. Adobe replays are available when we're offline. So, and we have replays on both on YouTube and Behance. So please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the creative goodness. And uh, stick around for the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Jack Watson. Followed by a new episode of How To with Claudie, where she will show you how to create a social media campaign using Adobe Illustrator. I am DTM. Find me anywhere on the internet, Delta Tango Mike. And please follow Stephanie on Instagram, Behance, or her website. Send her compliments because the art is amazing. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> Any last comments from the chat? Let us know. Thank you, Wade, for all the links and uh, chat. Thank you, everybody, for joining us in the chat. You guys are awesome. Stay tuned for more here on Behance. And yes, chat, try that sculpting idea and uh, and get back into drawing. It combines being creative, original, and references. And sometimes when you're sculpting, you want to draw the idea a couple times just so that you, you have a plan of what you're going to sculpt. So definitely. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I bought me some 
some stuff to sculpt because I have ideas on toys that I want. I don't want to go look for the toys and buy them. I want to build it myself. That's super cool. I can definitely see your work translating into like um, figures and different toys. And I hope I want to see that. I hope you do. <laughs> that's my homework. There yep, that's go. your homework. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Becca, Chad, and everyone else who left a comment. If you leave a comment right now, I will say your name in the stream. We got 10 seconds left. There we go. Appreciate y'all hanging out. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Stephanie, for the awesome artwork. And we'll yes. see you next time. Thank you all.